All right, in this video, we are going to start reviewing for the chapter 13 test. And uh, first one, and again, I would encourage you to have a pencil paper. Try these questions with me. Don't just watch. I'm including this first one. So I'd pause the video and see if you can find angles that are coterminal. If you forget what that word means, it means they just end at the same spot as 30 degrees. So you can draw a picture if you want, but you don't actually have to. So give it a shot. All right, so 30 degrees looks like this. So you always start on the positive x-axis, and then if it's a positive angle, you draw up. If it's negative, you draw down. So here I'm going to draw up, and you just kind of got to angle guess. I'm drawing it. That's about 30 degrees. And then the trick for coterminal is you, you don't even really need a picture. You just add or subtract by 360s. Okay, and so essentially what's happening is if I'm already at 30, and then I go 360 more, I'll be back at 30. Right, and my total will have then been 390. Right, so basically I just take this number and add 360. So 390 is one coterminal angle. Okay, you can also go the other way. So if I take 30 and minus 360, right, that'll be negative 330, and that's another coterminal. So that's like starting here and then going in the negative direction, 360, back to where you are. Okay, and you can just keep going, right? So if I need more coterminal, just keep adding or subtracting 360s. Um, you can get as many coterminal ones as you need. But conceptually, you're just spinning around. Okay, so this style's on the test too, so which is not coterminal with the other three, so pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, and what I would do here is just pick one, maybe even the first one, and just start adding and subtracting, I guess these are all positive or beyond it. So I just start adding 360s to see which ones I hit. So negative 157 plus 360. So that's 203. So that means these two are definitely coterminal. And then let's add another 360. And we're at 365, 363. So this one's definitely coterminal. So it's these three are coterminal and this one is not. So again, I would just pick one and you know, keep adding 360s, and if it's not working out, then it's probably the one that's not coterminal. Right? But here it's pretty easy to tell those ones all would end at the same spot. All right, period and amplitude. Um, again, pause the video and see if you remember how to do this. Okay, the period is how long for one cycle, like one repetition, how many X units does that take? And so you can take like from the top here to the top here would work and we just have to say okay we went from pi to 5 pi so that is 4 pi long so the period's 4 pi and that's the period okay and then you can also start at 0 is a good starting point and then just go all the way around and it would repeat right here right so that again is from 0 to 4 pi so it's 4 pi right so however you look at it, the cycles 4 pi Amplitude is half the height, so what I would recommend doing here is just say like the lowest value is 4 on the y-axis and the highest is positive 4, sorry, the lowest is negative 4, and so our height is like 8, so our amplitude is half of that. So we're going to do 1 half of 8, which is 4. Okay, so our amplitude here is 4. Hopefully those are pretty straightforward, right? Period is how long for one cycle, amplitude is half the height. Okay, uh, just a different style of question, and there is something along these lines on the test. So again, pause the video and see if you can make some sense of it. Okay, answer A, it says uh, the period is four seconds. That means it'll do one cycle. So if we draw a picture of it, it takes four seconds to do that. Okay, and we've got 60 seconds to work with. A minute is 60 seconds. This is just going to be a divide one. If one cycle takes four seconds and we have 60 to work with, just do 60 divided by four per cycle, and that means you'll get 15 cycles. So in 60 seconds, you can finish 15 cycles. All right. Um, part B is uh, kind of just a different style. So if you're struggling, draw a picture, right? Realistically, the answer to this is just you have 55 seconds 
divided by five cycles. And the period is how long for one cycle? So just divide. Do 55 divided into five cycles means it's 11 seconds per one cycle. Okay, and if you, if you really want to go deep in the weeds, you know, you can draw a picture of it. Like, here's, sorry, I'm struggling to draw, but that's, you know, there's five cycles of uh, periodic function. And we know that this is 55 seconds. So you just divide it by five again. And each one of these is five seconds. No, 11 seconds. All right, so if you do a picture there, sometimes that helps. Sorry for the bad handwriting. I, I, lo I had a nice writing tablet, and then it stopped working. So now I have this one that doesn't work very well. But anyways, okay, converting to uh, between radians and degrees. And the key to this is you got to just remember the ratio. So 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians. Okay, and it's just like converting between like Celsius and Fahrenheit or inches and centimeters. All right, but we just use this known ratio. So again, I would encourage you to pause the video and give this a shot before continuing. All right, so basically we're going to put the radians on the bottom. So we're going to put that whole fraction in the bottom. So we have like a fraction over a fraction. And the degrees is unknown, so that's going to be x in the numerator. Okay, and then to solve a proportion, if you have fraction equal to another fraction, the cross products have to be equal. So we're just going to take 180 times 4 pi over 5 and set that equal to pi times x. Okay, and then I'm just going to clean up this left-hand side. And so you can multiply the numerators and denominators right away, but I like to just reduce so, like we did this in the last chapter, we just kind of reduce stuff. Like, you make this a 1 and divide this by 5 to get 36. And now our denominator is just 1, which is nice. And up top, 36 times 4 pi is just uh, 36 times 4. It's 144. So, we have 144 times pi equals x times pi. And then divide both sides by pi there, and they essentially cancel out, and you end up with 144 degrees. All right, so uh, 4 pi over 5 radians is the same thing as 144 degrees. And you'll have to go both ways on the test. Take degrees and convert it to radians. I'm not going to do an example here because I think it's kind of the same idea and actually a little bit easier. But on the test, you'll have to go both ways. Okay, oh, actually, never mind. This is one where you're going to have to convert to degrees to radians. So figure out what this is in degrees and then convert it to radians. Okay, so this one is going down. So in degrees, this is negative 90 degrees, right? If you start here and go down, it's negative, right, in this standard form angle. So now I'm going to convert to radians. So again, I'm going to use the same setup. 180 degrees is pi radians. And we have the degrees this time, negative 90, and we want to know the radians x. Okay, and then it's just the same thing. Cross products, 180 times x equals negative 90 times pi. All right, and then this is times 180, so we just divide both sides by 180. All right, so x is equal to, and if you just got to clean up the fraction, negative 90 divided by 180 cleans up to negative half. So it's just negative half times pi. And you could do a decimal, right? You could do like negative 90 uh, times pi divided by 180, but we're just going to leave it as a fraction like this. So negative 1 half pi. Okay, exact values. This is one of the hardest things on this test. So again, I would pause the video and do everything you can before continuing. All right, so the trick is uh, we got to draw this first. So I'm going to draw along the positive x-axis as my starting point. And then I'm going to just draw a positive 135. So I'm going to go up because it's positive. So there's 90. 
All right, so I've gone 90 so far. So if I subtract these off, I've got to go 45 more. Okay, so I'm going to go 45. Sorry, that's a bad picture. Maybe I should draw it again. Let's get closer to a 45. Okay, so this is 45 more here. Okay, um, and then I'm going to use one of my special right triangles, right? So the trick here is I want to take this point, draw back to the x-axis, and make a right triangle. And importantly, this is 45 degrees right here to make 90 total. So that means it's the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Okay, and uh, these pictures will be right on the top of the test, but the hypotenuse will be 1, and then you just got to copy the values from that triangle, right? And so basically, if this is 1, the legs end up being square root of 2 over 2. So I'm going to label that on both of these legs. Okay, and then the kind of the final step in this setup, at least, is we've got to say are either of these legs negative. So that's where you've got to look at this like a coordinate plane. And since we went left on the x-axis, this one is negative, right? And since we went up on the y, this one is positive. Okay, so you got to, you know, think of it as a coordinate plane and be a little careful there. Okay, so our reference angle is right here highlighted in black that's our reference angle and we've got to do its sine ratio which is opposite to hypotenuse okay so our sine ratio for 135 sorry I ran out of space here but sine of 135 is op to hypotenuse right where op is that square root of 2 over 2 hypotenuse is 1 so if you divide by 1 nothing happens and you get square root of 2 over 2 Okay, so the sine of 135 is root 2 over 2. Okay, and you can check these on a calculator. To check, I just type sine of 135, and I get, you know, that crazy decimal. And then if I do root 2 over 2, I get the same decimal. So that's how I know that um, we got this right, right. The sine of 135 is this, and we want the exact value, not a decimal. So our answer is not this crazy looking decimal here. It's this root 2 over 2. All right, that's it. I'm going to make a second video to finish up the last few review questions.